Let me start with the punchline. MBA definitely, absolutely, without a doubt, 100% boosts your career. Whoever doubts this is either incredibly incompetent or has a different agenda. So your starting point um, shouldn't, shouldn't be whether it's valuable, because it is. But your starting point should be whether it's valuable enough that justifies your actual money and time investment and the opportunity cost you create by not working for almost two years. Okay, so let's find out if an MBA degree is right for you. The way I see it, you gain two types of returns by having an MBA degree, right? First one is that um, you learn, you obtain sort of a cohesive um, understanding of how business works. You learn everything from marketing to business strategy to corporate strategy to accounting, right? And the second benefit is that you get an increased salary from your current employer or you get a new job with a higher salary in a new organization. So let's talk about them one by one and, um, and see if they're really as beneficial as you may think. Um, by the way, I do have an MBA degree. Uh, in fact, it's from one of the top 10 business schools in Europe. It's Cass Business School of City University of London. Um, I graduated in, I think, 2012. So my experience is a great case study for you because you'll hear about not only the short-term benefits um, or the trade-offs, but also the long-term benefits of the program as well. So please pay attention. Let's start with the education. Now, in an MBA degree, you definitely learn a few things that you didn't know before. But I certainly doubt you'll learn enough to justify the investment. I mean, you will not learn anything that you can't learn from books. You want to learn strategy? Fine. Go, go buy Michael Porter's books, right? Um, want to learn marketing? Good. Go find experts in the field and read their books. Your professors will teach the same stuff, just more filtered and more condensed and present it with slides and case studies. So the value isn't really in the knowledge part. Okay. MBA is too general for it. You know, it may give you that cohesive business understanding, but not specific enough so that you can develop strategies to win, right? MBA is like, you know that old saying, it is a mile wide, but inch deep, right? You'll know about segmentation and positioning, fine, but that's just too high level. That's not what is needed for majority of corporate professionals to win or for entrepreneurs. For example, um, as, I as I said, you learn general marketing like positioning and segmentation in MBA, but in real world, what you need to know is the conversions, the funnels, how to create funnels, marketing for specific platforms and digital A-B testing and SEO and PPC, you know. Um, and the knowledge you'll learn at MBA is more applicable to like CMOs or CEOs of really, really top corporates who need to have that, you know, bird's eye view. You probably don't. And the other issue is that it's the fact that the world of business is changing faster than their ability to update their curriculum. So they're always lagging behind, right? In simple terms. MBA definitely doesn't make you a better employee. It doesn't make you a superstar performer. Um, and I've learned this the hard way. See, after my MBA, I ventured into consulting. Um, I first worked with a consulting firm called Accountability, which focused on sustainability consulting. And in that firm, my MBA was, you know, it, it sort of held its ground. It, it was okay. But then, um, after accountability, I joined PwC Consulting, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and that's where shit hit the fan. Excuse my language. Um, I was very confident, you know? I thought, I'm the shit. I know what I'm doing. I have an MBA degree from one of the best schools in the world. I spent two years and tens of thousands of pounds, and, and I'm also coming from another consulting firm. I know what I'm doing. Man. <laughs> I... Um, I definitely had the shock of my life in my first month, my first three months maybe. I mean, the level of intensity, the intellect, knowledge, expertise, action, the, the, the thought process those guys play at is just out of the world. So it was not something I had ever even thought of 
And I'm not even talking about managers or partners. I'm talking about junior consultants, senior consultants, guys who reported to me. I mean, in my first maybe up to three months, I failed at everything. I failed at consulting and quality client work in my presentations and even leadership. My confidence took a beating, like absolute beating, you know. This was five years ago. So that's when I learned the hard way that while an MBA degree supposedly prepares you to all these top-notch consulting firms or investment banks, the reality is that they don't. <laughs> I mean, fortunately, I adjusted very quickly and I survived and then I eventually thrived. But even after five or maybe six years now, I still remember that shock. Um, it lasted over three months. Okay, so I hope this was clear. Education quality, don't expect miracles. Next is the return on investment. So you get that either through an increase in your salary from your current employer or you get a new job with a higher salary in a new organization. This is true. And um, if you are in a management consulting, corporate finance, investment banking and consumer goods industries, then you'll probably benefit the most. In fact, if you are smart about just one thing, then you can benefit immensely. I'm going to share with you what that one thing is just in a minute, but I need to first give you an analogy. Think of your career as a computer, like, like an assembled PC. All your previous employers and your schools are like the components that make up that computer. So when a buyer looks at a computer, um, it doesn't look at, look at its case, right? What, what, what do you do? I mean, you look at its um, components, you look at the graphics card, or you say it's NVIDIA GTX 1080, for example. Uh, or you say, oh, it's a crappy graphics card from North Korea, right? So the brand name of your previous employers or your business school give you that credibility. And that credibility makes you jump to the next level in your career. But then is why is brand name important? I mean, you can still be a kick-ass professional even if you don't come from big name employers or schools. That's true. So there are two answers to that question. First one is the obvious one. Uh, the better training, better exposure and more competitive environment, well-educated and experienced team members that you can learn from, right? So this is the obvious one. But there's also a less obvious reason. And this is highly true for consulting firms and investment bankers. See. Consulting firms essentially sell two things, right? I mean, they sell their um, track record, right? They, in certain work packages, like the experience of the firm, but they also sell your profile. In each proposal we prepare, there's always a detailed section where the background of the consultants go in. And trust me, that's usually the first section clients look at. You give a 100-page proposal, right? The first thing they do is Open it up and look at who's going to be on the team. I swear to God, this is exactly what happens. I've seen it hundreds of hundreds of times. And um, so, and that makes perfect sense, actually, because firms don't really exist. I mean, they're only a bunch of people put together to deliver certain value adds, right? It's people. So continuing with the same analogy, your resume is nothing more than the brochure of that assembled computer. That means the more brand names you collect as components, the more chances you will have. Now, why did I give this analogy? It's because if you're going to have an MBA degree, listen to this carefully, the worst decision you can make is to go invest that money and time into a school that doesn't even have a strong brand name. Because the brand name is pretty much the only thing you're getting out of it. That brain, brand name converts into money, not, not the knowledge per se. Anything below the top 100 programs in maybe like Financial Times rankings, in my opinion, should be avoided like the plague, really. And if you want really, really strong returns, then I suggest you stick to only top 10. Okay. So. Let me share with you why I personally wanted an MBA degree and how it turned out for my career. Maybe you're interested. See, after I lost my job with uh, Standard & Poor's back in 2008, I had many opportunities. I had Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, I had Bain, all interested in working with me. 
But the salaries they offered were, at that time, were not really what I was expecting. I was relatively young and um, I didn't have a pretty strong vision vision for my future. So I didn't have mentors sort of guiding me. And I did a pretty stupid thing and joined a no-name local company who paid me a lot of money. So they paid me more than a uh, triple of what the big name employers offered me. I think I was 26. So I, I kind of cashed in the brand name of Standard & Poor's. And um, I remember I, I made almost as, as, as high as $100,000 salary. I mean, first it was amazing. I bought sports cars. I, I bought um, first Honda S2000 and then BMW M3. I lived a pretty lavish lifestyle uh, for a couple of years. And this continued until when I lost that job in 2010 during downsizing. That's when things got quite ugly. I was stupid. I had no savings. I spent it all on cars and parties. And that was it. But I still somehow thought that, you know, all those big name firms would still come and hire me. Maybe for a lower salary, but they'd be interested in me, right? Wrong. I was no longer the S&P guy, the Standard & Poor's guy in their eyes. I was a local company guy. They no longer even wanted to have interviews with me. Nothing. The doors were shut. Then I settled for another local company just to pay the bills. Again, a no-name employer. It was a great firm, but it had no name. And um, it was really downhill from there, right? So within as little as three years, my career was completely destroyed. It felt like, you know, I fell from the Champions League down to UEFA Cup, you know. Not even that, even worse, like down to third league. And that's exactly what it was. So that's when I realized that I need a brand name again in my brochure. And, um, but I knew that even, even after NBA, it won't immediately put me back to Champions League. Right. But at least it could open more opportunities, which can become a stepping stone to where I want to be. Right. So step by step. And that's exactly what happened. I graduated from my MBA and I joined a well-known but boutique consulting firm, which specializes in sustainability. Um, then I leveraged that experience to jump to PwC Consulting. So that was about four years ago. So basically it worked great for me because I knew what I would be getting out of it. Right. So before you commit to um, investing tens of thousands of dollars or pounds, just make sure that you have a methodological approach towards what you want and whether the program is going to give it to you. OK, that's it for today. Uh, but before I conclude the video, uh, let me briefly talk about the uh, talk about my LIG program. If you are following my channel for some time, you'd know that this channel entirely exists so I can have an opportunity to present my LIG program to you. Um, so I strongly recommend you check it out if you're unemployed or underemployed, especially before you consider an expensive program like MBA, because uh, you may just not be aware of certain advanced strategies that I teach, which will lend you these jobs with uh, multinational companies. Uh, maybe all you need is a quick fix to get the jobs you deserve. Maybe you don't need such an MBA program. Um, so it doesn't hurt to take a look. Uh, maybe it can save you from a very large investment. Plus, LIG comes with a uh, with an incredible bonus of direct online support from me uh, personally. So I personally answer all your questions and um, I'm there for you. It's pretty awesome. Just, just check it out. Very well. See you next week.